Yesterday, Tyson Walker announces his return. Today, Malik Hall announces his return. And next year's basketball season is going to be a movie. Ha <laughs> ha! Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Lockdown Spartans listeners, how on earth are we all doing? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Spartans. And well, for the second day in a row, a very joyous episode of Locked On Spartans as we have some big basketball news to get to and basketball news that you already know, but it's not going to stop us from talking about it for the next 15 or so minutes uh, because, because this is very exciting. Um, but first, that's right, we got to pay a bill. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Lockdown. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown today to get started. All right, let's continue this hoot nanny here. Uh, Malik Hall, as you guys have already found out by now, he is coming back to the squad next season for the 2023-24 college basketball season. This comes a day after Tyson Walker announces his return in Michigan State. Rolling in. To next fall with uh, a roster of 12 guys that uh, can compete. And not just a Big Ten level, but a national championship winning level. And oh, my God. When, I, when you put it like that, you got to say, putting the, the NC word out there, national championship word out there, it, it brings a tightness to the chest. But hey, high expectations are back in East Lansing. So come and get them while they're hot. We're going to talk about this. What this means for the team. Is it truly natty or bust how many minutes are going to be allocated amongst this roster uh but let's just get down to the brass tacks here all right malik hall he is coming back for what is going to feel like his 17th year at michigan state but in reality it's somehow only his fifth year uh that game where he had a perfect day shooting from the floor against seton hall on the road Truly feels like it happened in 2008, but um, no, I mean, hey, with the COVID year, all that fun stuff, you get to hang out in college for as long as you want, and we are thankful Malik Hall is sticking it out for a fifth year. Uh, we're talking about a guy, look, the last two years, nine points, four rebounds. Nothing that's going to set the world on fire, but we're going to get into it here in the next few minutes of why this is an important piece for a team, especially going into next year with the rest of their roster the way it is built. Uh, 37.5 career three-point shooter. That'll be a nice little kickout option to have on fast breaks, kind of like Joey Hauser was this season, the guy that would trail the rest of the pack. And, okay, well, the defense is clogging up the lane. If they put all their resources into stopping the ball at the hoop, you can kick it back out to a guy like Malik Hall. Now, I want to stop myself right now. No, I'm not saying that Malik Hall is going to perfectly fill in for Joey Hauser, who was – Nearly a 50% shooter from three, but look, you get a guy that can shoot the rock well. And with Joey Hauser leaving, all right, that's one domino that fell, all right? If you lose Malik Hall, then you're only coming back with two guys that can shoot the three-point ball pretty well, and that is, of course, Tyson Walker, that we talked about all day yesterday, and then, well, Jaden Akins as well. I would really like to have a third horseman out there. Um, yes, could. Garrick Norman be a good three-point shooter? Perhaps, yes. Uh, that is what he is known to do in the high school ranks, but could take a guy a year or two to get that started collegiately. But this is a long way of saying that, yeah, Malik Hall's got a solid shot. Now, I know he didn't really display that at the end of the season, especially in the tournament where he didn't make a three, but um, we're talking about a guy that is just rehabbing a foot, may or may not have had surgery very recently, and I think that may impact some shooting, but yes, uh, on his career, 37.5% three-point shooter, which is, that's a percentage you take quite some time. Also, um, we're going to go to barttorvik.com. Yes, if I had a dollar for every time I referenced that website, I would be MSU's biggest NIL benefactor, but it's not how the world works. Anyway, barttorvik.com. You can add, you can subtract players, and they'll spit out where you're going to be nationally. And they do this national ranking based on your average defensive efficiency, offensive efficiency, stack it up with the rest of the teams in the nation. And right now, with Malik Hall back, with Tyson Walker back, MSU, four in the nation. They are the fourth best team in the nation. Let's say Malik Hall didn't come back. All right, Michigan State would still be a top 10 team, but they would have slid all the way back to seven. 
So, no, just three spots isn't massive in the grand scheme of things. But, I mean, if you're going for a national title, you take any advantage that you can get. And Malik Hall is a big advantage to this roster. Now I get it. I get it because, um, believe me, I, I read the comments. I do read the emails. I hear the chatter on Twitter. Um, and I, I got to maybe just put this out there right now. Like, I know who we're talking about. We're talking about Malik Hall. And I came to his defense a lot after the season ended, especially after that Kansas State game where kind of struggled. But, I mean, I don't think he struggled as much as everyone led on to believe. But, yes, I know I'm not talking about Draymond Green here, you know, or prime Miles Bridges. Like, it we are talking about a solid role play here. So I just want to check myself right now because I know there's some concern out there, some worries, and I just want to dispel those right now because some things that you hear is, well, I got three worries written down in front of me that I've heard a lot of uh, since the offseason started when it comes to Malik Hall. And number one is the, uh, well, this will stunt the growth of Cohen Carr and more importantly, Xavier Booker coming in. Um, this is going to eat into their minutes. This is really going to stunt their growth early on in their careers. And, First and foremost, I, I really strongly disagree with that because point blank, and if you've been listening to this podcast for some time here, you'll not you're not gonna be surprised at this, but I, I never thought Xavier Booker was going to be a 30 minute a night game anyway, coming in immediately to his freshman season. Again, the long story short here is that Xavier Booker has a top 10 recruiting ranking because of where he will be eventually one day. He has a very high ceiling. He has a lot of the physical traits. He's got a smooth-looking jumper, but he's still got a way to go before he hits that ceiling. I don't even know if he hits it in one year. So, no, I don't think that he was going to be a 30-minute-a-night player anyway, and I think it's actually nice that you maybe avoid having to do that. Also, same goes with Cohen Carr. Um, we'll go with the minute breakdowns here in a little bit, but I see like 10 to 12 minutes for Cohen Carr per night, and I really don't think that changes much with Malik Hall coming back. Also, I mean, it is really nice, too, that uh, Malik Hall is versatile. He can slide up into the three, for example, should Jaden Akins move up to the two to take some of those minutes or what have you. Long story short, Malik Hall versatile enough to play the three. That'll open up some four minutes for Xavier Booker or Cohen Carr. Or also, hey, Cohen Carr can play the three as well. Xavier Booker can play the five. So there will be minutes to be had for these kids. Um, and let's say Xavier Booker starts shining anyway during the season, and it's clear that he should be getting the bulk of the minutes. I, I have no doubt that that will happen later on if Xavier Booker really does start to hit that ceiling earlier on. Um and look, you know what? That leads right into the next point here. Uh, is that, look, I, I I think Malik Hall knows he's not coming back to be the number two option offensively. You know, I don't think he's coming back expecting 38 minutes a night. Like, I, he's not stupid. I, I think he knows the role he's going to come into next year. And it might even be the role that he ended this season on, of being that guy off the bench. And I know that you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, this means that Malik Hall – is going to get all the minutes. He's going to get all the starts just because he's the older guy, and that's what Izzo does. Not really. Um, He's shown very recently that that's not always the case. I mean, how many times has he given the backseat to a senior, and which is really rare in this day and age of basketball, if a senior knows that his role is going to shrink, out the window he goes. But look, we've seen this in very recent history, like Ben Carter took a back seat to Jaron Jackson in his senior year. I mean, God, it's almost a perfect comparison. Ben Carter, older experienced player, solid player, uh, ravished with injury late in his career, kind of like Malik Hall has been, giving the back seat to a talented Jaron Jackson, a guy who is getting a lot of comparison with Xavier Booker. Yeah, Ben Carter took a back seat in his senior year to Jaron Jackson as Jaron saw his production go up. He earned his way on the court and, Look, I'm not going to talk about the Syracuse game. I feel a lot differently than a lot of other people do. I think Ben Carter was the correct call there. But, again, I don't want people punching the air at home listening to this. But, yes, so we've seen it that year. We've seen it with Tum Tum taking a backseat his senior year to a sophomore, Cassius Winston. Gavin Schilling saw his role shrink throughout his career as well. It, it takes Izzo understanding that, okay, well, I should be playing this kid more and I'm going to defer to the Hall of Fame coach in identifying that because he has throughout his career. And it also takes even more from the kid coming back to realize what his role is going to be. Malik Hall, I don't think is a dummy. I, I think he knows that he is just going to be the grown man in the room 
if you will. And that's actually uh, some lingo borrowed from uh, Graham Couch's column on Malik Hall coming back, is that he's going to be the grown man in the room. And that's just what Michigan State needs, especially in that position with the fours, with Cohen Carr behind him, with Xavier Booker behind him. When you're playing side-by-side side with a center position that – has their faults so yes he is going to be the leader on the court off the court and just a solid player overall now that was two worries that people have we're going to get to one more worry on the other end of this break and talk about oh my god is this really natty or bust but first need to talk your ears off about fan duel sportsbook it's the number one sports book in the land. And it is a really good time to get in on the action. We got PGA golf season rolling out there. We have NBA playoffs, starting NHL playoffs, starting an MLB baseball season that could use some spicing up if you are like me and you're a fan of the Tigers who just make the summer miserable. Luckily, FanDuel is here to add some sauce on that summer. They're going to make watching Tigers baseball bearable this year. So God bless you, FanDuel. And hey, if you're a new customer, it's even better for you. Step up to the plate with the no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash lockdown, sign up, place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So do not miss your chance to get on the no sweat first bet up to $1,000 this baseball season, this NBA playoff season, NHL playoff season. When you join FanDuel today, just go to FanDuel.com slash lockdown to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Now let's keep talking Malik Hall as he uh, is one of two Spartans to make all of our weeks this week, or most of our weeks. Again, I mean, there are some people that just just have, have irrational hatred for Malik Hall. And that's the last thing I wanted to get to, too, is the, oh, oh Malik sucked last year. Oh, he was, he was awful last year. He sucked. He was bad. I don't like the guy just underwent foot surgery, all right? I mean, the, the guy came back off a broken foot for the second time, or, or some, I don't know if it was a broken foot or some strained foot, a foot injury twice in the same season. And let's remember two things. Let's remember what this team looked like without him on the court. All right, I always go back to this, is who else did you want out there at the end of the season? Did you want Pierre Brooks and his 8% shooting from three in the game? The guy who got lost on defense all the time. No, like someone had to take those minutes and it was going to be Malik Hall. Way different story going into next season. If not Malik, then who? Okay, well, hopefully a talented Cohen Carr or a talented Xavier Booker. Okay, like this is actually a position that is now a strength on this team with these three guys. But Again, let's remember the second thing, too, is just how solid Malik Hall was before the first foot injury, before he had to miss the time going into the PK-85. Double-digit points against Gonzaga, double-digit points against Villanova, and oh, yeah, oh, yeah, just a smooth 20 points, five rebounds in the Champions Classic against Kentucky. Like, he had a really, really strong start to his year. I mean, that just doesn't go away just because he was really bad down the stretch as he was playing with not just that hurt foot, but also, as Izzo alluded to last year, a hurt back as well. I get it. Believe me, I get it. Like, availability is your best ability. Yes, he has had injuries the last two seasons, but again, just like we talked about with, all right, well, who's behind him? This year, this upcoming year, two talented freshmen. So, yes, while he's here, while he's healthy, you'll want him. And if he does get hurt, okay. MSU is still a deep team this year, which is not something they could say last year. So, yes, I'm going to take the guy that's 23 years old, the guy that averages nine points and four rebounds and will know his role. All right. And also, uh, I know that there's some chatter out there of like, oh, well, Malik's back. That means we're not going to get someone from the portal. I got a newsflash for you guys. I, I, don't, I don't think we were going to get anyone from the portal regardless. I, we, just, we just came from a season where they went into the year with, what, nine scholarship players, maybe 10 scholarship players, whatever it was, and there wasn't even a thought from Izzo of going into the portal once Micah Parrish picked San Diego State. I mean, it wasn't really hot on the trails, as we all famously know now. I don't think going into next year with even more scholarship players already on the team that he would have dipped in the portal and gotten a kid. Like, I, it was either Malik Hall or it was nothing. I would rather have. Malik Hall, I know, call me crazy, but this is the, the fun part too, is that now Michigan State has three guys going into next year that are going to be over the age of 23 years old, all right? It's going to be Malik Hall, it's going to be Tyson Walker, and A.J. Hogard as well. 
You add that experience with the, the fresh blood, you know, that great top three rated recruiting class. And then all the guys in the middle, like Jaden Aikens, guys like uh, Mike Sissoko, Jackson Kohler, Carson Cooper. You're feeling really good about this team going into a year that has national national championship or bust thoughts around most of this fan base. And uh, no one's asked me this question. I'm just going to ask it myself. Uh, sometimes you just got to do that as a podcaster. Um, but do I think it's natty or bust going into the season? Am I just going to be punching drywall? Um, just punching the windows out in my car if MSU doesn't win a national title and call call me a weak fan, but no, I mean not really, just because winning a national title is very, very, very hard to do. But I still have very high expectations for this team. And for me to call next season a success, you need one of two banners. And this is something I've already said. It's something I'm gonna say about 20 more times until the season tips off. You need to win one of two banners, the Big Ten regular season title. That'd be nice. Okay. That'd be okay. Or more importantly, a final four banner. A Big Ten tournament banner is not really a needle mover for me. Um, I'm sure if it happened, I would say yay, hooray, yippee. But no, you got to win the big one, the Big Ten regular season title, or the bigger one, a final four banner. I say that just because how big of a crapshoot the national tournament is anyway. Uh, yes, more times than not. You know, the national champ is very deserving. They are usually the best team in the country. But, you know, how many times have we seen teams falter early on, like Kansas this year, Houston, Alabama? Hello. I mean, I'm not breaking any news to you guys. So, yeah, that's where I'm at for expectations. Um, is Final Four, Big Ten regular season title. Uh, and if you don't get either of those, then hmm, <laughs> that's a bust then. That, that's a bust for me. Sky high expectations, though. Uh, let's not get it twisted. Uh, also, FanDuel. They have you as the, uh, well, I guess, tied for second best odds, or no, tied for third best odds in the country for the national championship. Uh, you are at 15 to 1 right now, which is actually better than 16 to 1 before Tyson Walker announced his return. You are tied with Kentucky, Houston, and Arizona all have 15 to 1 odds. There are two teams with 11 to 1 odds, and that is UConn, and that is Duke. Duke also had Kyle Filipowski announced his return. He was going to be a fringe first round draft pick. He announces his return. And how fitting is that? Because Malik Hall will probably meet Kyle Filipowski a lot in the upcoming Champions Classic next November. And also Tyrese Proctor as well. So that is going to, going to be a top five matchup in the Champions Classic between Michigan State and Duke. But yeah, so that's where we are for national title or bust talk. Now, we're going to round out this basketball talk with I'm going to give my best shot at projecting the minutes for next season. There are 200 minutes to be had amongst this team. Here we go. Uh, jot this all down or don't jot this all down, or I'm going to bark out a bunch of numbers at you. So buckle up, Buster. All right, A.J. Hogard, he's going to be around where he was at this year. I think 30 minutes. Right behind him, Jeremy Fears, I think 13 minutes. And then Trey Holloman, 10 minutes. 13 seems a little light for Jeremy Fears, but I think as the season goes on um, and you start to taper off this lineup somehow, even though you have 12 solid players, I think it's going to be in that 13-minute mark. Would not be surprised if it's higher, but that's where I'm at right now. Tyson Walker, slight dip to the 30-minute mark. Uh, he was at 32, I believe, last year. Jaden Akins, I think, will be at 25 minutes. Garrick Norman, 10 minutes. Cohen Carr, 12 minutes, just like we talked about. And then uh, Xavier Booker, 18 minutes. You know, you can play some of the four, dip down to the five. Malik Hall, probably 22 minutes. Uh, and then Sissoko, um, Jackson Kohler, and then Carson Cooper, 10 minutes apiece. Um, if you did all that quick math, that all adds up to 200 minutes. But that's kind of what I feel right there. 30 combined minutes from the, the center role, and then Xavier Booker will eat up some of those minutes, maybe Malik Hall plays the five during some small ball. But yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of um, versatility between Aikens two going between the two and the three, uh, maybe fears as well. So yeah, again, like that's what I love about this roster too, is that it's only the fives that really have no versatility to them. Monty Sissoko, Carson Cooper, Jackson Kohler, like those, those guys are fives and only fives. Whereas, you know, the rest of the roster for Save, Holloman, and, and Hogarth, those guys are probably ones and only ones, although we did see a few lineups with both of them on the court at the same time last year, which was mind-boggling. But, yeah, you know, I guess we're just going to put a bow on this, is that we are going to see 
87 lineups per game, I feel like, to start the season as Tom Izzo tries to figure out this wonderful problem of a jigsaw puzzle he has in front of him. But, yeah, versatility everywhere, experience everywhere, talent everywhere. It is so fun. Oh, basketball is fun again, guys. This is great. Um, If it wasn't fun enough for you last year, uh, hey, just enjoy this offseason, this upcoming year, and let's pray for a healthy offseason coming up. So there you have it. Thanks a ton for giving us a watch, guys, on YouTube. You guys are the best. We will be back with more talk this week. Uh, some basketball recruiting at the end of the week. We also got some spring football talk as well. Keep it tuned here. Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white, five days a week. Let's go. Let's go.